Thank you very much. And the next item of business is members' business debate on motion 15976 in the name of Fulton McGregor on Give Them Time. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons and I call on Fulton McGregor to open the debate for around seven minutes, please, Mr McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. And I'd like to take this chance, uh, firstly, to thank all my fellow members across parties in this chamber who signed the motion. And I'd also like to thank the Give Them Time campaign, some of whom are in the gallery today, for their tenacity in highlighting the issue of deferment for children who are four at the start of the school year, and for their hard work and determination in ensuring that those choosing to defer their four-year-olds are given the support they deserve and indeed should be entitled to. And I think that any member across the chamber who's got Twitter will have at least had some contact with the campaign team. Of course, I would like to pay particular tribute to the campaigners from my own constituency in Coatbridge and Chryston, who first raised the issue with me and invited me to the campaign launch event in Edinburgh at the end of last year. I also want to express the thanks of, from the campaign to both Marie Todd, who facilitated a meeting late last year following the launch, and to John Swinney for his responses to my questions here in the chamber a month or so ago. These interventions are very much appreciated by those in the gallery today and further afield, and regarded as crucial contributions in moving the debate to where we are now. Presiding officer, give them time are not a political organisation or affiliated to any political party. There are two very simple principles and objectives to the campaign. The first, and as is stated in my motion, is this. Deferment of a four-year-old child should be the decision of the parent or legal guardian. That simple. This is the law in Scotland under the Education Scotland Act 1980. It should be noted that while individual members of the campaign have their own views, give them time are not directly involved in debates about what age a child should start school or what sort of early years approach should be taken. Although I would note that I've had many positive conversations about the government's play-based approach. It is much more straightforward than that at its essence. If a parent, it is a parent that should decide if the four-year-old starts school or not. There is no argument made by the campaign that there should be deferment for all four-year-olds as standard. Indeed, far from it, there is actually a general consensus that a majority will continue to send their children when they are four, if eligible, to do so. So why is this an issue, presiding officer, if it's already law? Simply put, it seems the vast majority of people in Scotland do not know this to be the case. A national survey carried out by Give Them Time showed that on average 19% of parents knew about the legal right to defer September to December born children, compared to over 80% knowing that January and February born children can be deferred. Local authorities are clearly not highlighting this for children born before January, and there are examples where even staff themselves often do not know the law on the right to defer. And I have to admit, President officer, that I fell into this category. Until I met members of the campaign, I myself was not aware that children born September to December could be deferred. I'm in a position where this will not impact on me anyway, as both my children will be five and a half and five and three months respectively when they start school. But what it did, did show and highlight to me is that there is a real need to highlight this issue more broadly. And I hope the government, local authorities and MSPs here today can work together to do this. This is the first aim of the campaign. So now we move on to the second aim and principle uh, of, the, of the Give Them Time campaign. Presiding officer, we've established that at this present time, if you decide to defer entry for a child with a January or February birthday, they will be automatically entitled to an additional year of funded preschool education. And this takes so much pressure off parents at such a crucial time. But unfortunately, this consistency in terms of access to another funded year across local authorities is not there for those children who are born between late August and December. If you choose to defer entry for a child with a birthday in this period, they will not automatically be entitled to another year of funded preschool education. You can apply to your local authority for an additional year. However, the place will be offered only at their discretion. And this, in some cases, is ultimately holding many parents to ransom. Families are often put through rigid, time-consuming and stressful processes. These processes often include collating information from various professionals, such as the nursery, speech and language therapists, social workers, and many others, using up valuable time, resource and expense, only for a panel to then refuse and then an appeal process to start. A council panel rejecting the recommendations, often of its own professionals, would seem to be somewhat ironic, but it does happen. There is also likely to be equality issues at the core, with more affluent families perhaps being able to put resources into challenging decisions, 
and ultimately getting more favourable outcomes on a more regular basis. This is not consistent or fair, and I'm aware that my colleague Rona Mackay will pick up on some of these points in her contribution. It should be said that there are wide variations in how local authorities approach the additional year of funding, with Falkirk Council, for instance, being held up as an example of good practice. But this inconsistency of, on a matter of such importance as our children's ed start to their formal education is not acceptable. It's totally against the very idea of getting it right for every child and child centre practice to even threaten, never mind carry out, taking a child out for provision where their parents feel that they are safe and thriving. And it is these very experiences which led to the campaign being formed. Parents and carers with similar experience in using the power of social media and the internet to come together and seek change. Improved consistency across the country is what we need, and this is the second main principle and aim. Presiding officer, how might we go about achieving this? Well, firstly, I would encourage every MSP in here to write to their own local authority education department and ask that their policy is changed to one that ensures that all children whose parents choose to legally defer are given continued funded nursery provision for that year. With the amount of investment and time going into the 11.40 hours free childcare and the predicted relatively limited uptake for the deferment of late August to December born children, around 1,100 it's anticipated, this should be an achievable goal. Indeed, if you use the data from the 2017 local government benchmarking framework, there may actually be a small saving for councils in there too. Helpfully given time, we'll write to MSPs over the coming days with a template letter that can be used if you so wish. This will include information on encouraging councils to raise awareness of the right to defer and changing policy on a funded nursery. It may be, however, that councils are reluctant to change the policy and therefore, if, if failing this, I would also suggest writing to your council leaders or group leaders as appropriate and asking them to bring forward a motion to full council. I'm pleased to say that in North Lanarkshire Council, SNP councillor Alan Stubbs has made this proposal, while I've also been informed that a five councillor has done likewise. These proposals, indeed like this motion, are very much cross-party and non-political issue, and I'd be non-party political issue. And I'd be very surprised if any councillor of, or any persuasion was not to back a motion in front of them. And I would also encourage the government today to raise awareness of the issue and discuss further with COSLA, whose response and briefing for today's debate I fully welcome on how consistency can be promoted Scotland-wide. Finally, President Officer, by having this debate today, by raising awareness of the legal right to defer when a child is four, and by strongly encouraging councils to adopt a more child-centred approach to this issue in terms of funded nursery placement that is in line with this government's progressive policies, we can make the necessary changes to ensure that the Given Time campaign has been a success and that no child in Scotland will ever be denied deferral if their parent or guardian has decided that is the best thing for them. Thank you, President Officer. May I ask those in the public gallery to desist from clapping, please? Or from booing if you don't like what you hear, whatever. Thank you very much. <laughs> and we move on to the open debate. And can I ask members to keep their speeches to four minutes, please? And I call Oliver Mundell, followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I start by uh, commending Fulton McGregor on securing support to bring this important uh, debate uh, to the Parliament this evening and also join him in uh, congratulating uh, and thanking uh, campaigners for the clear success uh, they've had in at least moving this up uh, the political agenda. I also uh, would join him in uh, paying tribute to them uh, for the broad consensus uh, they've, they've, they've built uh, and uh, the ability to, to help uh, us as politicians uh, understand uh, what's going on in our area and to understand what the legal position is. Um, I was, uh, like Fulton McGregor, and I, I suspect many others, uh, surprised uh, by uh, the huge variation uh, across the country. This is the third debate in two days um, I've taken part in where uh, variation uh, between local authorities has come up in terms of education. Um, and I think uh, it is very, very hard because I think certainly in this case, the legal rights, the same for parents, uh, no matter where they live uh, in Scotland and the legal expectations of education uh, are the same for all young people. Um, and so too, uh, I think, is, is the expectation 
uh, that decisions would be taken with the best interests uh, of a child uh, at, at the heart rather than uh, based on, on arbitrary policies. And I think it's quite worrying uh, both that within uh, many local authorities there seems to be a lack of understanding about what the, what the law is and, and what best practice looks like. Uh, but secondly, uh, a, a very, very strong worry uh, that parents uh, don't understand uh, their right and the fact that only 20% uh, of parents uh, you know, know about this information uh, should, should give us all uh, cause for concern. Um, I was particularly struck uh, by a number um, of the, the quotes uh, that, uh, the, that were, were provided in the briefing uh, for this uh, debate uh, where uh, parents were uh, being given no real guidance um, and I found the, the process uh, completely uh, bewildering. Um, and rather than uh, listening uh, to the case uh, that parents wanted to make and respecting uh, their rights as parents, as, uh, as uh, the leading expert often uh, and almost always um, in, in, in uh, the education of their own child, uh, you know, just to, to receive no uh, formal uh, guidance or information, no communication, um, and uh, for those parents to feel that decisions were predetermined, uh, yet they were made to jump through a number of hoops, uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't sound good um, at all. And that's backed up uh, by the views um, of many uh, nursery uh, teachers and uh, those working in early years. Um, and I think that seeing this, uh, you know, th this information come forward you know, is, is surprising and when you consider uh, that many of those who are most affected by this issue are actually unkeen uh, to cause a fuss. They'd rather uh, try and navigate their way through the system um, and don't always want to speak out about the poor experience they've had uh, because they're concerned that they may lose uh, their, their funded entitlement. And I think uh, more than that, it is, as uh, Fulton McGregor uh, has, has said already, about thinking what, what impact uh, this, this has uh, on education. And we know very clearly here, and I know the minister um, has spoken out on this previously, uh, but if we don't get things right for children at the start of school, uh, if we don't make sure that they're ready and equipped to go into that slightly more formal educational setting in primary one, if we get that part wrong, uh, we're setting that child up for a difficult uh, education experience right the way through primary school, sometimes into secondary school, um, and, and, and making it more difficult for them uh, later in life. So I think uh, some of these issues would be difficult uh, to fix, and local authorities don't always... Uh, don't, don't always uh, jump uh, just because MSPs uh, write them a letter. Uh, but I certainly think uh, there's a duty on all of us uh, to, to really push this issue and make sure that parents uh, and uh, local authorities uh, are, are working together uh, in the best interest of the child. Thank you, President Officer. Rona Mackay, followed by Claire Baker. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful to my colleague Fulton McGregor for bringing this debate to the Chamber and I congratulate him for enabling this important issue to be discussed. Presiding Officer, when your child starts school, it's one of the most important milestones in their lives and in a parent's. Being sure that the time is right for that child is a hugely important decision and not one which is ever taken lightly. We know that children develop at different rates and that the early years are the most formative of their lives. That's why deciding when the right time it is for your child to start school is so vital. The concerns of the grassroots campaign uh, group give them time, are transparency, awareness, and I would add fairness. As Fulton McGregor said, only 19% of parents know about the legal right to defer September to December born children's school start date, compared with 80% knowing that January and February born children can be deferred. My own son was born in December, albeit 23 years ago, and he went to school at four and a half. I had no idea he could have waited until he was five. No information was communicated, so I didn't think about it. I'm not sure if the same rules applied back then, but that's of no consequence. This is 2019, and parents should have all the important uh, information available to them at this crucial time. Local authorities' websites explaining the process are, in the main, woefully inadequate. Indeed, some staff who advise parents in deferral don't even know about the legal right to defer a mid-August to December born child. And that's not to blame the staff in any way. It has to do with leadership of that council and the appropriate training. So it's incumbent on council officers to ensure policy and legal information is easily available and easy to understand on their individual websites. 
My own local authority, Eastern Bartonshire Council, say that people have the right to apply for a deferment for children born uh, between September and December, but they don't guarantee funding, only that it would be considered by the early years community assessment team. That creates much uncertainty and anxiety for parents, and I intend to write to them asking them to uh, look again at this policy. This brings me on to the important point regarding equity and fairness. The fact is that local authority processes for dealing with funding requests for the extra month's nursery funding vary widely, and it does appear to be another one of those postcode lotteries. Some authorities are much more likely to fund a further year of nursery for a mid to uh, December born child than others, mid August to December born child than others. Furthermore, when a further year's nursery funding request has been rejected, some councils allow parents to finance a child to remain in a local authority nursery, while others don't. That's despite the fact that if the nursery is not at full capacity, no extra cost to the authority should be incurred. This is where the question of equity arises, because if an authority refuses to fund parents for the extra months, parents who can afford to pay will, more often than not, do that. Parents who can't afford it obviously have no choice. This does nothing to narrow the attainment gap, which is the Scottish Government's priority, and I believe everyone's priority. And of course, the process itself can be flawed, as Fulton McGregor said, eh, stated decisions are often made by panels consisting of people who don't know the child involved and the opinions and professional judgment of the people who know the child best such as the early year staff and of course the parents are often given little weight presiding officer surely the solution is that all children being deferred should have a further year of nursery automatically funded and that would level the playing field as Fulton McGregor said, we're transforming our level of early years care with record amounts of funding, and this should be achievable across the board in Scotland. The Scottish Government believes in getting it right for every child. Let's all work to encourage local authorities to do the same. Thank you. Claire Baker, followed by Alison Johnson. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to speak in this afternoon's debate, and I congratulate Fulton McGregor for securing the time. It is a motion that is widely supported by members across the chamber and I hope this debate provides some insight and maybe even some solutions to the situation many parents are facing. So on one hand in Scotland we have legislation which is clear that a child doesn't have to start school until they're aged five and on the other hand the practice of starting school at age four if their birthday is between school commencement and December while parents whose child is four in January or December have the choice to defer the child's entry. So what we are hearing through the Give Them Time campaign is that the policy has been applied differently by different local authorities and some parents whose requests are accepted are not being provided with an additional year's nursery place. There are a number of issues with this. I exaggerated the word defer. As the legislation says, a child doesn't need to register with a school prior to a fifth birthday. Why is it seen as delayed when it is following the legislation? I exaggerated the word additional for a year at nursery because the reality is that these children who start school at four typically have the least time at nursery as they start in January following their third birthday. So they only have one and a half years of nursery rather than two. So they are the youngest in the school year but with less preschool education. So the situation exists where the parent could decide that they want to defer, having, go, having gone through what some describe as a bureaucratic and difficult assessment, the Education Authority then decides that they can't support deferral and while the child can legally still wait a year, the Education Authority doesn't need to provide what they see as an additional year's nursery provision. We shouldn't forget that a child who starts school at four will be starting high school at 11, being almost a whole year younger than others at a challenging time in their education when they're entering a period of exams, increased stress and adolescence. The debate about high school starting age is as relevant as primary school. I can't help feel that some of these tensions could be resolved if there was clearer information to parents. And I note that COSLA have briefed us that they are agreeing to a consistent approach. And importantly, if there was some discussion at an earlier stage. When a child turns three and a parent is offered a January nursery place, at that point, there could be a discussion with the parents. There could be an initial discussion about options. Perhaps then a parent could be offered the opportunity for a younger child to delay the start of nursery until the August intake, when they would then receive two full years of nursery, as the majority of other children do, and then start school at five. A few years ago, we had a campaign for a January intake for three-year-olds, but that was principally because these children were only getting a year because they were being admitted to school at four years old. Parents could be given an informed choice over whether or not to accept a January intake, if that then meant their child would start school at four. 
This would obviously need to be a bit of flexibility. A child's development is not entirely predictable, but both parties could be more informed. The parallel discussion to this, and I recognise it's not an aim of the Give Them Time campaign, is about the right age to start school. We have one of the lowest formal education start ages in Europe. I am convinced that four is too young to start school. I believe many parents accept this situation because we have a culture that puts that expectation on young children. There's a lack of affordable childcare for parents and school can make working easier. Nursery maybe doesn't meet the needs of all children or the parent doesn't know that they have a right to defer. There's a lot of evidence show that children benefit from longer in a play-based setting, learning important social and educational skills outside of a former classroom. Much is made of primary one being play-based, but the evidence to support that is questionable, and that's before we talk about P1 testing. I am always a supporter of a fairer funding deal for local authorities, but this doesn't appear to be governed by funding. In many cases, there is available space in a local nursery to enable nursery provision to continue. I don't think parents should have to self-finance, which excludes lower-income families from taking this decision. I do support better information and more meaningful discussion for all involved in the decision and I support the aims of the Give Them Time campaign and hope these issues can be resolved. Alison Johnson followed by Ian Gray. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you too to Fulton McGregor um, and to the excellent Give Them Time campaign whose work has ensured that a fully transparent, consistent approach which puts the child at the centre of decisions to defer entry to primary school. You know, that work has, has ensured that this issue is being debated in the chamber this evening. Um, I'd like to make it clear from the outset that I am wholly supportive of the campaign and its aims. And the campaign is necessary because too many families have experienced, indeed are experiencing, needlessly difficult and stressful situations that despite the best efforts of all involved can be very unsettling for parents and child. Um, you know, starting primary school should be a, a really exciting experience, one that everyone in the household looks forward to. But that excitement, you know, some of that can be lost when there's concern about when the right time is, when there's a feeling that children are being asked to attend before they're ready. And why is it the case that only 19% of parents were told in the excellent briefing from G Give Them Time why is it the case that only 19% of parents knew about that legal right to defer children born between mid-August and December? And I, frankly, I was quite astonished, astonished to realise that not all staff working in this area are aware of this. This is a legal right, and it just shows what happens when we don't understand what our rights are. So I think um, all credit to the campaign already they've succeeded in raising awareness of the fact that this legal right, so more people will become aware of it and that is important progress because if we don't know what our rights are we can't act on them now my own party the scottish green party policy is that children start school at six i realize we're not having that debate this evening um, and i appreciate that the primary one experience has changed to a play-based one but it still takes place in the school setting where specific requirements, specific timings, where the length of day is a certain length, you know, it still applies to everyone in that building. And, you know, that's an experience that all children of what is currently in this country considered school age in Scotland, they're not all ready for it. And the people who look after them closely know that. So let's do all that we can, and this debate is doing that, to make sure people know that they've got a right to defer children born between mid-August and December. We know too, of course, that some lo local authorities are more likely to fund a further year of nursery for a child born between those dates than others, and that across the country, processes for dealing with those funding requests vary. And we've learned that when a further year's nursery funding request has been rejected, and Rona Mackay highlighted this, some councils allow parents to finance a child to remain in a local authority nursery, while others don't. Of course, some parents can afford to fund that option Others can't. So this is simply inequitable. And, you know, frankly, we cannot have that. I mean, colleagues will know that I wholeheartedly support greater devolution of powers to local authorities. But when it comes to the well-being, when it comes to the education of our youngest citizens, then we need to make sure that the very best practice is in place, that that best practice is accepted, and that that best practice is available to all our children. So that best practice... That is, that all parents and carers know about the legal right to defer children, 
and that all children being deferred have a year of nursery automatically funded. And that best practice must surely mean getting it right for every child. I have heard you know, through this briefing, we're hearing about generic letters of refusal. That's not about individuals. That's just you know, a template going out. Uniform cut and paste rejection simply isn't good enough. I'm running out of time, presiding officer, but I'd like to thank, give them time for their briefing. And as they say in their briefing, we want our children to thrive, not just cope. And it can't be put better than that. Thank you. Ian Gray, followed by Maureen Watt. Uh, thank you very much, presiding officer, and uh, my congratulations too to Phil McGregor for um, bringing the debate forward and doing so much to uh, help the Give Them Time campaign. But the greatest congratulations uh, do indeed have to go to the campaign, who in a short time really have created um, a, a very effective mobilisation. I, uh, like other colleagues, was not aware of the issue until uh, constituents uh, caught up in uh, um, uh, decisions made by my local council, which uh, I, I have to say I disagree with, brought that to my attention. Some of them are here uh, this evening. The campaign has been a very effective user of uh, social media, uh, of direct communication with uh, MSPs, um, and has produced a very, very clear briefing uh, for this evening's uh, debate. So there, that, that's a great deal of good work already done. I think colleagues have uh, described in some detail the key issues uh, around deferral, the postcode lottery uh, of decision making, but also even prior to that, the very poor communication and low level of understanding of the possibility of deferring school entry at all. But, but you know, I, I think there is a danger that we overcomplicate this. There is a core issue here, and that core issue is a policy contradiction, and it is a national policy contradiction. I think we should press our councils to be more uh, uh, accepting of those parents who defer. But there are two national policies here which are contradicting each other or uh, seem to be in contradiction. One is parents have a legal right to defer uh, 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 if the child is four. And the second is that three and four year olds have a legal right to funded hours in early years in nursery. And we all support those two things. It, it makes no sense uh, that exercising one legal right takes away the other legal right for a family. It just makes no sense. It's not log logical. M Mr. McGregor uh, talked about the replies that he and I received from John Swinney when we asked questions uh, of Mr. Swinney about this. And, I felt that the reply I got was quite unsatisfactory, if I'm honest, because Mr. Swinney said that um, these decisions must be based on what is best for the child. And he made it clear that what he meant there was what is, best by the, what is considered best for the child by professionals, and I guess, presumably, one of these panels, perhaps of counsellors as well. But the right to defer is an absolute right for parents. It's, an absolute, it's a parent's decision. And the logic of Mr. Swinney's position, I thought, when I thought about it afterwards, was he, he was really saying, if, if it's only this panel and the professionals who can decide what's best for the child in terms of funding for nursery, then that's an argument for saying they should be able to decide on the issue of deferral as well. But I don't think he was really suggesting that. I, 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 think, I think he does want parents to be able to defer. Look, the only logical solution to this, the only logical position here uh, is to change the law uh, and to protect both the right to defer and the right to funded hours at nursery. And then all of the problems, well not all of the problems, the issue of communication about the right to defer would still be there, but the issue about the postcode lottery and the process which families are being put through would disappear. And, and you know, we do have a legislative vehicle. I think we should have a legislative vehicle to actually do that coming up because we'll have to legislate for the 1140 hours entitlement. I think that would be a perfect opportunity for us to uh, get out of this illogical position, give parents the right not just to defer, but to have their funded hours at nursery as well. And if the minister could tell us that she's going to do that tonight, that would be a tremendous success. Maureen Watt, followed by Alison Harris. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. And can I too thank Fulton McGregor for submitting this motion and for securing 
time to debate this important subject. As Alison Johnson has already said, for many parents and carers, this stage in a child's life can be one of the most stressful for them, even if not for the child. And making the right decision is not always obvious or easy. Parents can receive very conflicting information and views on what is best for their child. But what is best for the child should be paramount and all aspects of the child's development should be taken into account. As Rona Mackay has said, this is absolutely what getting it right for every child is about. And this is, these are the principles which must be adhered to by all local authorities. This debate is around parents wanting to defer uh, entry of their child into P1. Uh, in my case, although not yesterday, it was the other way around. There is only 17 and a half months between my son and daughter, who is a February birthday. The primary school were adamant that her entry should be deferred for a year, not because they had any evidence that Kirsty would not cope, but that they had a boy in the same situation at the previous intake who definitely hadn't coped and they didn't want to repeat that experience. Now, notwithstanding that girls at that age uh, tend to uh, grow up more quickly than boys, Kirsty had been going to nursery on the days that I had council business, and more importantly, she'd been looking over her brother's shoulder at the reading and writing that he'd be doing. Eventually, with the nursery staff supporting comments, Kirsty was allowed to start school. And at the first e parents' evening, the school were gracious enough to admit that the, I had been right. Now, it was always in my mind that at some further stage, Kirsty might struggle and might have to repeat a year, which also has its difficulties. But then I was the one who was wrong. She didn't need another year and is now the proud owner of a first-class honours degree in business management and French from Glasgow University and working in Paris. I use this example to illustrate that it's not <coughs> one size fits all and that Gerfet must apply to every child and there should be no difference in schools or local authorities. There's no doubt that an extra year has crept into education uh, over the years, but that's a debate for another time. So in closing, presiding officer, I'd like to mention the importance of smooth transitions. There, these are most often used in the context of transition from primary to secondary, but are important in all transitions, including from nursery to primary. I know that the Youth Parliament and the CAMS leads were looking at this in relation to one of the actions in the mental health strategy, and the Minister might be able to tell us how that is progressing. <coughs> as the ambitious rollout of nursery provision to the same hours as primary school continues, and the wonderful increase in pay-based learning continues in both nursery and the early years of, of primary, I hope give them time, becomes much less of an issue. Alison Harris, followed by Elaine Smith. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm happy to be speaking in today's Members' Business on Give Them Time campaign, and I also thank Fulton McGregor for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Today, oh, I'm sorry, there are many problems in relation to childcare here in Scotland, but today is not an opportunity to discuss all of these problems. Today is an opportunity to talk about one of them. In 1980, the Education Scotland Act made it possible for parents to defer entry of their children in the first year of primary school if the child was aged between four and five at the start of the school session. There are many reasons why parents might take this decision, but ultimately it comes down to a feeling that their child is just not ready to enter school. Parental choice is an important aspect of early years education. And as we've heard, this choice is limited in several local authorities. In many councils, an extra year of funding childcare is often granted along with such a deferral. This allows parents to continue living their lives as they wish. Sadly though, this is not the case everywhere. Some councils do not offer another funded year to parents, meaning the decision on deferring their child is controlled by the family's financial situation and not the parental choice to defer. As we've heard, Give Them Time is a grassroots campaign 
aiming to make it possible for parents to have a legal right to another year of funded childcare for their child. And as others have pointed out, many councils do offer an extra year of funded childcare on a needs basis. And I know that in my region of central Scotland, for example, in North and South Lanarkshire through to Falkirk, the picture is varied. Whereas just slightly to the north, Stirling only granted around a quarter of requests last year. This is the type of postcode lottery situation we see too often with childcare. A parent residing in one council is able to make a choice about the deferral of their child freely, while a parent in another authority has the shadow of costs hanging over them. Give Them Time wants to eliminate this postcode lottery so that all parents who are eligible to defer their child can receive another year of funded childcare. It's not a child's fault that they were born in a certain month, so why should they have to suffer and be pushed into school early because of where the, the, that month falls in the school year? Give Them Time has wide-ranging support too, and I'm happy to have backed this motion so that parents receive equity in treatment. However, this is only the first step. I've heard worrying reports that in Fife, parents who wish to defer their children and receive funded childcare are told that this provision must take place in a council nursery. This is not, this is not in the spirit of equity, fairness or parental choice. It echoes the problems we've seen in the expansion to 1140 hours of funded childcare, that private, voluntary and independent sector nurseries are excluded. Parents should be free to choose to defer their child for a year if eligible, without worrying about additional costs for childcare. They should be able to choose for this childcare provision to be held at any service that meets the national standard. They shouldn't have to pull their child out of one nursery to send them to another. So in supporting this campaign, let us also to commit to the principle of parental choice. To reiterate, a need for equity and fairness was the reason given Give Them Time was founded. So let's ensure this aim stays at the heart of our discussions. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Elaine Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and like others, can I also thank Philip McGregor for bringing this important campaign to the Chamber and the level of cross-party support for his motion is a testament to the importance of this issue. And like others, can also commend the Give Them Time campaign operating in Coatbridge and across Scotland for the work they're doing to highlight the issue and welcome them to the Chamber. As mentioned, the, a, a national survey found that 80% of parents were aware that children born in January in February had a legal right to defer their school start and receive nursery funding, but by contrast, only 19% knew that children born between mid-August and December had the right to defer. In addition to issues of awareness, there's no guarantee, obviously, as we've heard, of the necessary funding for the nursery. Age remains the sole determinant on whether a child is ready to attend school, but the primary that school starting age in Scotland is a leftover from the Victorian era and it's been the same age since the 1872 Education Act. So while Scottish children start school between the ages of four and a half and five and a half, which like Claire Baker I've always personally thought to be far too young, in many countries around Europe the, the starting age is six or even seven. In fact the UK has got one of the youngest starting ages in the world. In reality a child's readiness for school has got more to do with their development than their age and some studies suggest that children who begin their education later tend to do better academically in the long term, notwithstanding my uh, colleague Maureen's uh, daughter. <laughs> um, there are many reasons, of course, why a parent might wish to defer their child's entry to primary school. And the important thing is the choice must be theirs, a point that I think Maureen was making, since they know their child best. The significant regional variation in whether an application to defer will be accepted is also a matter of concern. There's clearly a need for a national standard um, being set across all local authorities and parents should have an opportunity of being involved in all decisions made regarding their children's education. So the process of applying for a deferral doesn't seem to me to now be fit for purpose. And that's obvious in the testimony of the parents who are concerned with the issues, uh, with the issue, many of whom, regardless of local authority area, are actually reporting the same issues. A number of parents have complained about a lack of involvement in the application process, and there have also been reports of decisions being made by panels of senior staff members who have never met the children involved, and so they've got little prior knowledge of the case. And it's understandably frustrating for parents to need to seek the approval of health and education professionals only to then have 
uh, approval overruled by the panels. The campaign um, has also highlighted the experience of parents who felt as though nursery and school staff were actually being encouraged to, do, to discourage them from using their right to defer. And there are some interesting quotes in the anonymous survey that was done, if I might just read out a few of them. Lack of communication from council, uninformative and largely predetermined, and probably the worst one, diabolical system, unfair and disappointing. So these are some of the comments that parents have made. No one understands the progress and development of their children better than parents. So ultimately, decisions should fall to them and the government should support parents in making this decision. That was a point uh, very strongly made by Ian Gray. And that's why I support the campaign's proposal to ensure that staff dealing with applications are fully trained in parents' legal rights and the information offered is clear and consistent. And I'm pleased to see that um, COSLA appears to have agreed with this in their briefing for today. However, parents shouldn't have to resort to funding their own places. And as such, it's important that deferred pupils have nursery places funded automatically. Otherwise, as Philip McGregor pointed out in his opening speech, there will be implications for access equality and there will be issues of poverty. So while this is a serious matter for parents, um, I do understand the financial constraints, presiding officer, that local authorities have been working under in recent years. And of course, that might influence decisions. But that is another reason why it's so important for the government to be proactive in helping to resolve the inconsistencies around this issue. And as Ian Gray pointed out, that may well have to include the opportunity to legislate on the matter. The campaign to give them time will no doubt continue and I look forward to the Minister's views in responding to the debate. Once again, I thank Fulton McGregor. I now call on Marie Todd to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Fulton McGregor for um, raising this issue and supporting the parents involved in this campaign who want to improve information and awareness for parents. Um, and I gather many of you are in the chamber, so welcome to the Parliament. It's really, um, it, it is fine to see you here. I met with the parents from Give Them Time in December, and I appreciate that this is a very personal issue for many families. Of course, it's important that they have the information that they need to make an informed choice for their children. And I'm pleased to confirm to Parliament that Scottish Government and COSLA officials have been working together since my meeting with Give Them Time to improve the information for families around the de deferral process. And that includes changes to the information on the Scottish Government and Education Scotland websites to increase the clarity for parents and carers about their rights. To begin, it's important to be absolutely clear about current policy. All children who are still four at the start of the school real year can be deferred and start primary one the following year. Those children with a birthday in January or February who defer school entry are automatically entitled to another year of funded early learning and childcare. And where a child's fifth birthday falls between the start of the school year and December, parents can choose to defer entry to primary one and request a further year of funded early learning and childcare. It is then for local authorities to consider carefully any request for additional funded early learning and childcare based on an assessment of the child's needs. Now, as decisions about access to additional funded early learning and childcare for children whose fifth birthday falls between the start of the school year and, and December are a matter of discretion for local authorities, it's important that local authorities listen to the campaign's concerns about parental awareness. Uh, certainly. Jeremy Balfour. Uh, I, I'm grateful to the uh, Minister for her words. Would she write to the 32 local authorities, uh, encouraging them to look at uh, inquiries favourably and to report that there is a cross-party view within this parliament that there should be funding for these children? Um, and would she like to write to local authorities to encourage them to do that? Marie Todd. As I said, my officials have been working along with COSLO officials to improve the communication of parental rights since we all met, and I'm more than happy to do whatever is required to improve that situation. Where deferral is being considered, I think it's really important that parents are given accurate information. But let me be very clear about this. I think it's 
very important that parents are fully involved in the decision-making process, which is in line with guidance and the government's expectations around parental involvement and communication. The Scottish Schools Parental Involvement Act in 2006 placed duties on local authorities and schools to involve parents in their child's education. And good quality communication is a really important part of this. Indeed, it is one of the key goals in the Scottish Government's Learning Together Action Plan on parental involvement and engagement that was published last year. Certainly. Claire Baker. Um, I welcome the Minister's comments on parental involvement. Does she have, uh, do you, is there any barriers to the suggestion that you approach a family when the child is approaching three and have a discussion about the fact that the child will start school at four and you can maybe at that point then wait until the summer and you start school and you get two full years. Are there any problems with adopting that type of approach? Marie Todd. That's certainly something that I'm willing to explore so I'll, um, I will look into that um, and I thank the member for that suggestion. If a local authority makes the decision that they're not going to fund the additional year of early learning and childcare, it's really important that parents understand the reasoning behind that decision and that they're reassured that if they send their child to school, their child will get their support that they require. Um, Oliver Mandel raised the point um, that this is the third debate in two days that we've had talking about variation between local authorities and there is undoubtedly a tension between central control and local discretion and I come from a part of the country where we really value that local discretion. I continue to believe that it's right for decisions about access to additional funded ELC for children between September and December to be made on a case-by-case -case basis by local authorities. But let me reiterate again, parents should be fully involved in that decision making. In this afternoon's debate, we also heard concerns from Rona Mackay and others about the impact on the attainment gap. And closing the poverty related attainment gap is a priority for this government. We believe that the expansion of funded early learning and childcare will make a real difference for Scotland's children. And I know that local authorities are similarly committed to ensuring equity and excellence for all and that they'll continue to give full and careful consideration to requests for additional funded early learning and childcare for those ch um, children whose parents believe deferral is the best choice. We know that transformative, it, the, the transformative impact that high quality early learning and childcare can have, particularly for children from a more disadvantaged background. And that's why we already provide an additional year of early learning and childcare to those two year olds who are likely to benefit most. Around a quarter of two year olds are entitled to extra funded early learning and childcare. And local authorities have further discretion to support other two year olds that they feel would benefit. Now, we also heard, um, and I want to make this point very, very clear, we believe in government that schools must be child ready rather than children being school ready. And in Scotland, we have taken the important step of fully integrating our early years in school curricula, the early level of curriculum for excellence. Um, it deliberately spans early learning and early primary education. And in response to um, some of the points that Alison Johnson raised, um, as a result of this collaboration, early learning settings in primary schools often work very closely together to ensure a smooth transition. In many cases, this can mean a play-based learning approach extends into uh, early, the school year's education. Um, and in fact, I've visited a number of schools where I haven't been able to tell the difference between the nursery, cl nursery classes and primary one. There's no desks in the primary one. Um, and in fact, you know, I say I love to visit a nursery which is like a Marie Celeste, the children are outside playing. So um, it's a real strength of our system that Scotland's curriculum enables practitioners um, to introduce a play-based child-centred approach throughout the learner journey and specifically to support the um, transition into P1. Um, the children facing the greatest socio socioeconomic disadvantage um, benefit also from the additional resource provided through the Pupil Equity Fund and there are excellent examples of PEF supporting transition arrangements in early years with funding being used for outdoor learning and for the early years practitioners to move to the school or the nursery class or for the school teachers to move in, in there. So presiding officer in closing. If you wish to minister very quickly though. Alison yeah. Johnson. Thank you. I, mean, I appreciate that the minister is highlighting 
all the good things that go on when you get to school. But it seems to me the crux of this is issue is that parents and carers feel in very many circumstances that the child should not be in that environment. What concerns me here is that we have a right for some people, but a child who's born one day later loses out on the funding. It just seems to me to be entirely unfair. And I just wonder if the minister will address that issue. Marie Todd. So I, 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 um, understand the concern that you have and I have said I have reiterated several times how important I think it is for when the local authority are making the decision for the parents who are as many people have said the greatest experts in that child to be fully involved in that decision um, and that is the the way forward that I would advocate is that those parents should be absolutely a part of the decision that is made about what is best for the child. Presiding officer, in closing, I would like to thank Fulton McGregor and the members of Give Them Time campaign, some of whom are in the gallery today. Um, I know that this issue is very close to their hearts and I'm more than happy to meet with them again to continue our discussions. And I also thank all of the members who have contributed to this debate. Thank you. That concludes the debate and this meeting is closed.